Hello, I'm Lauren Corvubius, welcoming you to Call from the Mountain Prophetic Insights, where we're encouraging people to understand there's so much more going on than meets the eye, that we need to have the Word of God, we need to have prophetic insight into the times in which we live. A couple of weeks ago, I shared with you about Israel and how important it is for us to recognize that Israel is not the focus of prophetic prophecy, nor what's happening in these latter days of time. Although I shared how it has an important part to play, and part of that is that it is the final destiny, that the gospel takes a traveling uh, mission around planet Earth, starting out in Jerusalem, ending up in Jerusalem. The reason I want to remind you of that is because it actually aired during the weekend that Israel was attacked by Hamas, and all kinds of things are going on about that. The news is covering it uh, basically 24-7, and letting us know how terrible the situation is over there in the Middle East. But I really believe that God wanted me to share that when he spoke it to me so that we'd be prepared that when these things transpired, we wouldn't automatically go back to our old mindsets and thought patterns as to what Bible prophecy is and how it's to be fulfilled. This is a new day, and in this new day, we need to have new insight and understanding about what it is that God is speaking. Today, I want to share with you about the story of Daniel, who was a prophetic person who lived in Babylon, captive by the enemies of the house of Israel. The Babylonian armies had went in and destroyed the holy city, destroyed the temple, took all the treasuries of the house of the Lord with them, and also what they called the cream of the crop, because they wanted to take the best of what Israel had, retrain them with Babylonian thinking, and then use them for the benefit of the Babylonian empire. Well, you can't change the mindset of somebody who knows that God's hand is upon their life and that God has a plan for them. And that's the way it was with Daniel and his companions. They determined within themselves that they were going to keep themselves faithful to God and to follow God's word in the midst of Babylonian captivity. Now, I really believe that's what God is speaking to the body of Christ today, that there is a way that seemeth right unto men. Mankind has a way of doing things, but it's not God's way. We have to understand how important it is that we walk in God's way. Now, the world wants you to think that the ways of the Bible or, or the ways of tradition in Christianity are just simple and you're out, just out of touch. And uh, sometimes they want to kind of marginalize the Christian and look down on them as just simple folk. But we understand that the Word of God is very wise. And we should know that we're the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath that God does not want us to let them look down on us, but to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, observe our wor world from a perspective of heaven, and that's what God wants us to see. Now, Daniel and his companions, because they lived different than the Babylonians, the Bible says that God blessed them. It was evident in their physical bodies. And also, they had a wisdom that even caused the kings and the other people in high positions to look and say, wow, you have wisdom, you have understanding we don't have. Church, that's where we need to be today as the body of Christ. But we cannot be in that place if we simply live in the old mindsets of the past and not recognize that if we're willing, God will give us insight into what's really going on in the world. Now, one day Daniel was very burdened for his people. Of course, they were in captivity. And so as a prophet, he shared the burden of the word of the Lord. And so in praying for the people of God, for a three-week period of time, he was in great intercession, and he gets an angelic visitation. The angel of the Lord comes to him and makes known to him what's happening in the spirit realm. He said, Daniel, in the day that you set your heart to seek the Lord, God had decided what he was going to do. He was going to answer your prayer. And on the answer to your prayer, I've come this far to talk to you. But then I was detained by the prince of Persia, and he gave him insight into the spiritual realm. There was a stronghold in Persia. There's in this picture of what's happening in the world, there are principalities and powers in heavenly places that this angel had to fight against in order to get over to Daniel. And he also explained how there was another drama going on and there was a time when he had to strengthen one of the kings. And so he let him know that, well, God had sent him so he would be there on time and fulfill the purposes of the Father, even though there would be a whole lot going on that would make Daniel not understand what was really happening as far as the time frame of things. Now, the reason this is important is because God can give us spiritual insight 
if we're willing to let God deal with our mindsets. Because if God speaks to you and you have a traditional mindset or religious mindset or a biblical mindset that's based on past understanding, you will misunderstand what it is that God is speaking. And it is even true in this particular reference of Scripture, because a lot of people will repeat the story I just shared with you and say, oh, yes, we're involved in spiritual warfare, so we got to bind the strong man. we got to fight against this person and that person. That's not what Daniel had to do. Daniel just had to wait. But as Christians in the New Covenant, it's very important also that we would understand we're in a whole different dimension than even in the day of uh, Daniel. It speaks about the ministry of Jesus Christ, and it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. We have to understand that Jesus Christ defeated all those strong men, if you would, strongholds. Some of them are still sitting in their place, but they're defeated enemies. And as Christians, we have to understand we're not supposed to be fighting against these so-called strong men because they've been defeated. We have to be obedient to what God has spoken to us to do. That's why in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, put on the whole armor of God and ultimately the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. And the apostle Paul even said to them, now pray for me that the words will be given, that utterance might be given, that I can go forth and proclaim the message of the gospel. And basically that was my last week message in prophetic insight, because referencing Romans chapter one, it tells us that because the people did not retain God in their knowledge, God turned them over to reprobate thinking. And they began to behave in a contrary fashion because all of a sudden they're living in the flesh and they're out of control. And then he talks about many of the sins and immoral things that are predominating in our society today. But what is important to understand in that scripture is the Bible tells us that we should look at it that as divine judgment. I've often heard people talk about the way things are in the world today and they say, well, we got to be careful. We're going to be under judgment. No, if you read God's word, Romans chapter one, you find out we're already under judgment. We have to understand that we have the judge who has passed the judgment. We got to find out what our place is in these plans and purposes. That's why Paul speaks about you've come to Mount Zion, this heavenly Jerusalem, and understand that it's important for us to know we come to God who is the judge, but also to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. And that blood speaks better things than that of Abel. It doesn't demand that we, uh, Abel, when his blood was shed, it demanded for justice and that would, God would curse Cain. But this is a blood that cries out for mercy. And that's the blood we're supposed to be speaking to the world in which we live. We're supposed to be telling them about the new covenant, the blessing of the Christ. We have to understand that the sword that God has given to us is the gospel the good news that God reigns in the affairs of men and he wants to reign in the affairs of individual lives. And this is the same message that God wants us to speak today so that we, the people of God, move in a confidence, not in fear, not wondering what's going on, but have a confidence we know what's going on and recognize that we have to be on what God is doing in the earth, on his side, so to speak, so that we can walk in the fullness of all things that he has. Daniel found out, as he demonstrated even to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, God is a God who sits in the thrones of heaven. And so what we have to understand is what's going on in the Middle East today is a shifting, is exposing of strongholds. And this is what the Bible says in the book of 2 Thessalonians. It says that the lawless one is revealed so that the Lord can destroy him by the brightness of his coming. So a lot of these things that are happening in a spiritual sense, it's God exposing the enemy, and we're going to see how God is going to destroy his power. I think we're going to see that in the natural. We're going to be amazed at the transformation that's going to take place. As we put our confidence in God, we'll also have a peace in the midst of this so that we can have a complete confidence in everything that God is speaking. Well, I appreciate you listening to this message today. If you are on the Call from the Mountain website, you'll know I have some books that are talking about the new day. We have to have a paradigm shift. We have to understand what God is doing from a mature perspective. And when we do, it's going to change everything we believe and know about the Word of God. Well, again, if you are watching us on YouTube, be sure and uh, subscribe to us or hit the like button. But communicate with us. God's raising up a people today. 
It is an army of resurrected ones that are going to do great and mighty things in the name of the Lord. Don't you want to join his army?